Well, over the next two weeks, we have a lot of catalysts coming up. Let's talk about exactly what dates you should be paying attention to. We'll specifically take a look at jobs, a CPI. Let's look at some pre uh, and early projections for some of these numbers. If they're out, we've got a JOLTS report coming out. Let's see what some of the surveys are for this. Let's go through all of this. Do keep in mind that on April 4th, we will uh, really be starting another earnings season. Uh, so April 4th. Fourth, stay tuned. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the small companies. Eh, there's really, really nothing too big on April 4th just yet, but we're going to get um, simply good foods. We'll get some steel reporting on uh, on the 5th. On the 6th, which is next Thursday, in terms of record reporting, we'll get WD-40, Levi Strauss. I like, like looking at those kinds of companies to see where the consumer's heads are and where inflation is. More interestingly, we'll probably be on the 11th. We'll get CarMax. Albertsons? Are we still seeing those food prices move up? How about those used car prices? How are they affecting margins? Because it seems like used car prices are falling, but wholesale prices are actually rising. So dealers are potentially looking at negative numbers. You've got uh, Rent the Runway on the 12th. You've got Delta Airlines, Progressive, Fastenal on the 13th. Then on the 18th is actually when you start getting the banks reporting. That's when things are really going to get entertaining, especially since they're going to show us the numbers for the banking crisis. We'll have a lot of banking commentary between the 18th and the 20th. We'll get Bank of America, Johnson Johnson, Goldman Sachs, Bank of New York Mellon. Those will report on uh, Tuesday. Johnson & Johnson will be very interesting in terms of uh, evaluating industrial inflation. How's that wage price spiral? Again, that's the 18th. Then, of course, we get our leading tech company. We get Netflix also on the 18th. Uh, on the 19th, then we get into like the Morgan Stanleys, the Citizens Financial, IBM, Zion's Bank, American Express on Thursday with Dr. Horton uh, and Nokia, as well as Blackstone and uh, and, and um, Associated Bank Corp. So we'll be getting a lot of financial information really the week of the 18th. I think more interesting for next week is going to be the jobs report. So really, probably for the next week, we're going to be mostly having, uh, we'll mostly be putting earnings on the table uh, and uh, paying a little less attention to earnings for next week. It'll be more fascinating to see what happens with jobs. And so let's take a look at what we've got uh, on the third, which is tomorrow. We'll get ISM manufacturing and prices paid surveys. Survey suggests that prices paid will come down slightly to 51.1. That is still in the expansionary ter territory, but down from 51.3 in the prior. We'll get uh, some commentary on ISM employment. Remember, this is the Institute for Supply Side Management. This is really sort of what comes before consumer price inflation, right? We'll get manufacturing PMIs on uh, Monday morning as well. Uh, those are the um, uh, manufacturing purchase manager indice numbers expecting slight contraction there at 49.3. Construction spending is expected to be flat month over month. On the 4th, we'll get factory orders, expecting those to be down half of a percent. We'll also on the 4th be getting the JOLTS, that is the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey. That number has consistently been above 10 million. It is regularly uh, uh, surprised uh, to the upside. The last release was at about 10.824 million. The next survey is for a 10.5 handle. I'd write that one down. That'll be on the 4th, 10.5. Stocks likely to move on the jolts, and of course, if we get a big move on ISM prices paid uh, to the upside, there could be some downside risk in um, in stocks. On the fifth, we'll be getting the S and P Services PMI, Purchases Managers Index. That'll be very important because obviously most folks expect that inflation is stickiest in the service sector. That is expected to come in at a match for the prior release of last month. So February and March expected to match at 53.8. That is, uh, again, the same as a prior release. Then on the 5th, we'll also be getting the ISM uh, prices paid. This is, uh, this is the services prices paid. So on Monday, we get ISM manufacturing prices paid. And on Tuesday, we'll get ISM services prices paid. No forecast yet for that. On Thursday, the 6th, we will be getting continuing jobless claims. We're expecting those to come in at 200,000. They've regularly been at about 200,000 for, uh, for new claims. And continuing claims, the prior release sat at about 1.689 million for continued unemployed individuals. That number shrank last time a little bit. We'll see how it comes out uh, this month. 
Then, uh, and, and before we keep going down this list here, obviously, I should always remind you that on the 12th, prices will be going up for the lifetime access on the courses on building your wealth. Check that out, link down below, or go to metkevin.com slash join. You can also just go to meetkevin.com and you'll see sort of a, a, everything that you can learn about whether it's house hack, life insurance. You can get in as little as five minutes at metkevin.com slash life. 12 free stocks with Weeble at metkevin.com slash free. Of course, these paid promotions. This being brought to you by StreamYard, metkevin.com slash StreamYard to learn how I bring these videos to you. So check all those links out down below. We're going to meetkevin.com to learn more where you can also learn about my ETF. Okay, so then we've got on uh, the 7th, we're going to be looking at that change in non-farm payroll. This is our jobs report. We'll also be getting, we should be getting ADP on Wednesday. Let me look at ADP first. ADP is expecting, that's the private version of the jobs report. We're looking at about a 210,000 expectation down from 242,000 jobs. That's a Wednesday for the ADP report. And then Friday, we'll be getting the change in non-farm payroll. That is looking like 240 is the survey. The last payroll report brought us in at 311,000. We now expect it to sit at 240,000. So nice sort of shrinkage in that jobs growth, obviously coming off those crazy numbers we had in January, probably heavily due to seasonal adjustments where we were sitting around 500,000 job gains. However, we will also be very closely looking at average hourly earnings. Average hourly earnings in the prior release came in at 0.2%. The survey now says... 0.3%. That is a little bit of a bump up to an annualized rate of 3.6% for average hourly earnings. It's a little aggressive. We'd like to see that come in soft. Then, of course, the next data set that we'll really be waiting for is the CPI report. We do have some surveys for CPI. First, though, on the 10th, we'll be getting a wholesale trade month over month. Uh, we don't yet have a survey for that, and we'll be getting wholesale inventories. Uh, no survey for that either. That'll be on the 10th. On the 11th, we'll get small business optimism, and then there we go. It is April 12th. April 12th, by the way, is also a day we'll be getting the FOMC meeting minutes. So what is the forecast for CPI month over month for March? Keep in mind that March will have uh, a lot of funky expectations given we uh, had a banking crisis and potentially reduced spending during the banking crisis. CPI month over month in March for the data release on April 12th is looking like it's expected to be down from the prior report of 0.4% month over month to 0.3%. That would be good. 0.5% uh, It was the prior release for core month over month. That's expected to shrink to 0.4%. Uh, however, the year-over-year -year number, uh, not clear yet. The prior release was 6%. No survey on that yet. However, year-over-year -year core could potentially accelerate from 5.5% to 5.6%. That wouldn't be great. Uh, the next day on the 13th, we'll also be getting PPI numbers. We do not yet have surveys for those with the exception of month-over-month -month final demand. Producer price inflation expected to be flat at 0%. So those are the catalysts for the next two weeks. Obviously, the most important are going to be jobs. So you should mark your calendar for the following things. Okay, Mark, these are the things I would be marking my calendar for. April 4th, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, JOLTS report. April 7th. 5.30 a.m. I will be live streaming the Meet Kevin Report at that time. You're welcome to join. Uh, 5.30 a.m. on the 7th, jobs. Then I would write down April 12th, expiration of Meet Kevin's coupon code for the amazing programs with lifetime access on building your wealth, specifically the bundle for zero to millionaire real estate investing and stocks and psychology of money, which comes with my trade alerts as well. Then CPI. Obviously, you want to write that down. That's on the 12th at 5.30 a.m. on the 12th of April. So those are some of the catalysts that we're really going to be paying attention to over the next, uh, over the next two, uh, uh, two weeks here. Those are going to be quite critical. Uh, and uh, right after these catalysts, we'll actually be going into banking earnings. Uh, and uh, understandably so, there'll be a lot of curiosity in terms of, okay, how are things getting affected through banking earnings? So we'll be paying heavy attention to banking earnings. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but this gives you a catalyst breakdown of what to expect over the next two, count them, two weeks. Kevin is my MF man, but your thoughts are going against the heads of entire five countries. 
fantastic points nonetheless. Man, these five countries can suck it. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I mean, look, obviously these countries are going to be big players uh, over the next uh, decades. Uh, I, I would not bet against China, but I'm not going to bet on China either. I'm going to bet on America. I'm going to bet on American PP. That's what I want. I don't want Chinese PP. I want American PP. I think American pricing power is much larger.